are these people? I decided to start with quick hits this time, so let's let's do that. Which calling it quick hits to get people down or not? He doesn't He's like doing that. the thing. He doesn't like that. He's trying to brand stuff. He doesn't I'm like trying that. to brand things. No. So these are quick. Brander. Although this one's not so quick. I had not heard this anywhere around, and I thought this was an interesting one. Jake Johnson over at Indie Media Award Honoree Common Dreams. Why? Why is the U.S. bombing Yemen with a B-2 bomber, no less? With zero congressional wow. authorization. Hmm. Especially weird considering that we barely have a fucking functioning president. And he's a lame duck, and that he will be no longer the president in nine weeks. And Twelve Trump weeks. Pop was a bad dude. And he ran a bunch of bad boys, but. And he ran a bunch of bad boys. That's correct. So that picture of the B two bomber actually is from my own library. I took that picture uh, at a NASCAR race more than twenty years ago. That's how long we've been doing yeah, this. Yeah, like it, Picasso. All right. The Biden administration on Wednesday deployed B-2 stealth bombers to, multiple, to launch multiple airstrikes on Yemen, attacks that underscore the U.S.'s deep involvement in a deadly regional war that is threatening to engulf the entire Middle East. Mm. That's not good. Nope. The U.S. Central Command, or CENTCOM, said in a statement that the strikes targeted numerous Iran-backed Houthi weapons storage facilities within Houthi-controlled areas of Yemen that contain various advanced commercial weapons used to target U.S. and international military and civilian vessels navigating international waters throughout the Red Sea and the Gulf of, Gulf of Aden. Now, why? Because the Yemeni Houthi rebels or Houthi fighters have been firing missiles at ships in that area and we're fucking them up. Good too. Regulators, you want to talk about regulators? <laughs> <laughs> Gotta be handy with the steel if you know what I mean. Earn your keep. Well, they they certainly have been. CENTCOM said it, its assessment of the damage inflicted by the strikes is ongoing and does not thus far indicate civilian casualties. No, it's just been no. It's just been military equipment casualties. The U.S. military has routinely refused to investigate, acknowledge, or apologize for killing civilians in Yemen and elsewhere around the world. Isn't that nice? Yeah. Isn't that nice? <laughs> they refuse. Uh, okay. The Houthis no. have we repeated... We are the United States government. We don't do that sort of thing. Uh, may he rest in power. <laughs> The Houthis have repeatedly attacked vessels in the Red Sea this year in what they see as an effort to stop Israel's decimation of the Gaza Strip. That's a, that, that's a good reason for it. The Biden administration has in turn bombed Yemen several times this year, strikes that progressive U.S. lawmakers have denounced as dangerous as well as illegal, given that the White House did not seek congressional authorization as required by the Constitution. Wait a minute. Starting another fucking war. <laughs> Wait, your problem is that they didn't get your permission? Not the fact that they bombed a sovereign country? I didn't see anything about Yemen sovereignty any anywhere in there. Okay. No. Why is the U.S. bombing Yemen with a B-2 bomber, no less, with zero congressional authorization, asked Sarah Leah Whitson, executive director for... The Arab Democracy for the Arab World Now, or Dawn, how clever. Following Wednesday strikes, are these members of Congress literally asleep or drugged? No, they're on vacation. They're on break until after the election. <laughs> like, literally. Huh? Deck Def Lloyd Austin, or Raytheon, you know, salesperson, said Wednesday that at the direction of President Joe Douchebag Biden... He authorized these targeted strikes to further degrade the Houthis' capability to continue their destabilizing behavior and to defend, protect and defend U.S. forces and personnel in one of the world's most critical waterways. How about stay the fuck you know out of there? The, you know the thing. How about stop arming Israel 
get them to stop killing Palestinians and people in Gaza and stop sending weapons there and stop sending them money and maybe they'll stop shooting at you. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. That That is why they started, isn't it? I, I seem to recall. Okay. You think? The strikes on one of the poorest nations in the world, Austin said, were a unique demonstration of the United States' ability to target facilities that our adversaries seek to keep out of reach, no matter how deeply buried underground, hardened, or fortified. A message that observers interpreted as a warning to Iran. Mm -hmm. uh, quote, the employment of U.S. Air Force B-2 Spirit long-range stealth bombers demonstrate U.S. global strike capabilities to take action against these targets when necessary, anytime, anywhere. That, that definitely sounds like diplomatic type of language, for sure. De-escalation diplomacy. Diplomatic immunity. No, no, he does not have diplomatic immunity. That's not true. That's right, it's been revoked. It's just been revoked. That's correct. Except he never had it in the first place. All right. The, employ <laughs> the employment of U.S. Air Force Base B-2, U.S. Air Force B-2 Spirit Long Range Stealth Bombers, again, anywhere, anytime, anywhere necessary. Wednesday's airstrikes reportedly marked the U.S.'s first use of the stealth bombers against Yemen, a country that's been devastated by years of relentless attacks by a U.S.-backed Saudi-led coalition. Yeah, they don't have an air force. They don't have a way to stop a B-2 fucking bomber. So the U.S. is just going <laughs> to go over there and just drop a couple things where they think their missiles might be, and if they hit something else, well, fuck off. What are you going to do? Why are you bullying me? The strikes came days after the Pentagon announced the deployment of American troops and an advanced anti-missile system to Israel ahead of the Israel, Israeli military's expected attack on Iran. The fact that we're even using that... Which was leaked recently, right? The fact that we're even so using I saw, that I think it was sentence. Clarenberg that said that that was done on purpose so that they don't attack Iran? Correct. Because uh, they... They want to, like, you know, show that they're strong when they're really little puss pusses. And they did you know? it through, and they did it through who exactly? Uh, I'm betting there's, I'm betting there's a particular outlet that's probably now on Substack, but you know, set how up. We know that they were set up by the yep. intel community. Okay. Wednesday's airstrikes reportedly marked the U.S.'s first use of stealth bombers, like I said, came days after expected attack on Iran. Bullshit. A coalition of progressive lawmakers, that's garbage, means meaningless, warned, warned in response to the troop deployment that military force will not solve the challenge posed by Iran. L weak <laughs> as fuck language. Okay. We need meaningful de-escalation and diplomacy. Agreed, not a wider war, the lawmaker said. Addressing the root causes is the only route to achieving long-term security and stability in the region. Nothing. Addressing the root causes is us being there. How about we get the fuck out? And sanction all the people at the top in, in Israel and take them out. And so start we, moving. So we, we. Start moving towards a single... A single state, a single Palestine. Nice. Nothing in current law authorizes the United States to conduct offensive military action against Iran. We risk becoming entangled in another catastrophic war that will inevitably harm innocent civilians and may cost billions of U.S. taxpayer dollars. And it's that last part that Lloyd Austin just got a boner over. Huh. Because that means that he's okay. making millions because he's a Raytheon board member. Sorry, children. No, I'm not even sorry. So that was out of Common <laughs> Dreams. All right. That was actually um, Jake Johnson, not any of those four, but those are some of the people at Common Dreams that are outstanding. Now, Reef did not want me to do this story. Why do you say, why do you say that? Why do you tell people that? 
Well, because you didn't Those, want me don't to do, do that. the story. Okay, hang on. Yeah, I gotta, don't. T- I got to freeze it now. Then don't either don't do the story I or do it back. anyway. And don't I, tell people I didn't want you to do it because James Lee's a dickhead. Now we got to go back. You know? All right. Here we go. Who Ready? took money from breaking points. He, he, he did. He still does. Right. Damn it. Tagged in her comment section right now after making this Instagram post. What was the post about, you might ask? Well, it's pretty simple. She was calling on Kellogg to remove harmful artificial food dyes from the cereals sold in the United States. She was citing a food blogger named Vani Hari, also known as the Food Babe, who pointed out that the U.S. version of Fruit Loops has a bunch of artificial food coloring in it. Red 40, yellow 5, blue 1, mm-hmm. yellow 6, yada yada. All those late. Whereas the Canadian version doesn't have those artificial food dyes in it. They use other things to color the Fruit Loops, such as you can see here, concentrated carrot juice, watermelon juice, blueberry juice. So much more, I would say, natural food coloring ingredients. Okay, that that's like reasonable, right? That's not like a hoax or you know anti vax. Okay. Well, I mean it's it's a lot of the stuff, it's like when those people post those like video, you know, they zoom in on food and there's like bugs and you know, stuff. It's like, yeah, that's what ha- that's what happens. It's everything, you know. If you zoom in on your body, it's probably also covered in bugs and bacteria and, 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 and. Yeah, but that's not, that's, this is. It's like if this affects you, five, ten percent of people have, you know, problems if you eat this amount. And, you know, if it's like the only part of your diet. Yeah, but you probably also shouldn't be doing that artificially colored anything. Like Perfect. it's in it's in like Gatorade, Gatorade. Yes. Water sucks. It really, really sucks. Come on. I mean, there's there's a reason why like to... go ahead. There's a reason why like you have you know there's natural food dyes which are a thing, but you don't get as like vibrant, bright, radioactive kid food colors. You know, so right. that's part of the thing. Yep. All right. So here's the rest Ooh. of it question why Kellogg's is selling the most toxic version of the same product in America, but not in other countries. But this triggered quite the backlash in our comment section with a bunch of people, namely nutritionists and PhDs and quote unquote experts saying that the food babe is not a legitimate source, that she's spreading tons of misinformation. So I looked into this a little bit and, and there's something you should know about these. This experts. is interesting. For example, Dr. Andrea Love. She says, hi, Ava Mendez. These ingredients aren't banned whatsoever and they have been deemed safe across the entire planet. The food babe is not a credible source of information on these topics at all. Well, this is Dr. Andrea Love. She's got all the right credentials. She's an immunologist, microbiologist, decades and decades of experience in training and clinical research, yada, yada. But she's also, if you can see here, a columnist for a nonprofit called the Genetic Literacy Project. If you do a little bit of digging, the Genetic Literacy Project has been outed as a PR front for Monsanto, Bayer, and the chemical industry. This is their IRS Form 990, where they have to disclose where they get all their money from. You see here at the top of the list, number one, biggest contributor, $100,000, Bayer. A little bit of conflict of interest there, eh? Well, let's talk about this lady, Danielle Shine. She is a registered dietitian. She says that, unfortunately, Ava, you've been misled. The food babe is not a qualified food nutrition professional. She lacks crucial food, nutrition, and health science knowledge. Without this foundation, everything can appear to be a threat to health, which simply isn't true. Well, something that is definitely true is that, according to the Washington Post, the food industry actually pays these influencer dietitians to shape your eating habits. They say that registered dietitians Mm -hmm. are being paid to post videos that promote diet soda, sugar, supplements on Instagram and TikTok. And another fact we know to be 100% true. It's literally like Harry Sisson for food. Yes. They're yeah, no, I mean, it's, they've been doing that for years and years and years and years. That's, well, that's it's, been it's advertising. It. It's, it, yes, it's advertising, yeah. but there's always been like standards and, and shit they had to, right, shit they had to, mm-hmm. they don't have to fucking adhere to anything here. Unfortunately, no. the inconvenient truth 
is that the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics has a record of quid pro quo with a range of food giants, with money being tracked flowing from big food into the hands of these yeah. nutritionists Kellogg and dietitians. And, and guess which company just happens to be one of the highest contributors of Bingo. the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics? Mm -hmm. Of course, Kellogg's. Because they now have you nutritious see how cereal. All these experts work, right? It's pay for play. They can cry misinformation all they want, but the receipts, they don't lie. Ava Mendez is. So, I mean, go, go, go look up your actual dietitians, your bodybuilders that have to do this stuff for their sport. You know, go look at what they're talking about. It's very easy. Calories in, calories out. Make sure your macros are balanced. Make sure you're getting as much micronutrients as possible. Avoid processed anything. Yep. You know? Well, so, I just, I saw a couple of people talk about Kellogg's and it certainly made the news because of celebrities. I still, yeah. I'm still. Well, then, then there's look, the man. whole organic grift on top of that. Where well, it's, no, like, it's not just an organic grift, but organic but means nothing. If they can, if they yeah, can, but like for, that's not a regulated thing. If like they a lot can, of this for the is, same price, use watermelon juice instead of red dye number 40, why the fuck aren't they yeah. doing that here? Because we're because not making that. Then it tastes like watermelon. You know, if you put ube in the, and make it purple, you know, putting enough in means you might have added flavors that are unwarranted. Yeah. I don't you know, know. I mean, so, it's like, don't look at where bacon bits come from either. Like, people oh, have no idea no, what no, their food that, consists of. That's pure salt, right? It's like salt lick just about you're eating. And wood pulp and oh God. the flavoring compounds comes from, like, wood, like lumber. My word. Um, moving on you know, to a little bit. How do you get bit. that smoke in there? So, so that was I mean, a little just, interesting on how we're being poisoned with our food. Now it's how we're being poisoned and how our funds are being drained and how this is all connected. And that's the reason why I brought this Mondo Weiss article. And of course, we know Mondo Weiss is another one of these indie media award honorees, you know. So we're being, and, and that's just one small way that Monsanto and chemical companies and everything are poisoning you know just in in the in they're they're putting that little bit of food dye in there which is not good for us but this guy made a connection about we covered Her hurricane helene extensively a couple weeks ago with the jets when jesse and jess yeah. were here uh we watched a mm -hmm. ton of footage and we watched that there's still people without electricity without power that are sleeping on tents that it even like weeks later and they it's disgraceful um, but this gentleman, Robert Kleins. How dare you? Yeah, it's Greta it would definitely be appropriate there yelling at people, but <laughs> the devastation from Hurricane Helene and Israel's ex escalation in the Middle East may not seem connected, but they are linked through the U.S.'s commitment to mass militarization yep. and the refusal to work toward a just global future. Um... And that is I-70 in Burke County just following Hurricane Aline. That's not what it looks like now, thankfully. All right. This was a short one. I grabbed a couple of paragraphs, um, a couple, a couple of slides worth. While residents in Appalachia are suffering the worst aspects of our climate future, on the other side of the world, the U.S. continues to provide military and financial aid to Israel as it wages bombing campaigns on Gaza, Lebanon, Syria, and Yemen. De the devastation from Helene and Israel's escalation in the Middle East may not seem connected, but they are linked. Like I said, uh, through mass mil militarization, imperial arrogance, exacerbation of climate change, which some say don't doesn't exist, but we're certainly changing the climate by destroying the world and refusal to work toward a just global future, whatever that means. I that's a little vague, but. In August, let's look at the numbers. The U.S. did agree to send Israel another three and a half billion dollars to spend on weapons. In September, they they upped that aid package to eight point seven billion, and this is on top of the three point eight billion that Israel receives annually from the U.S. 
say nothing of the intel, intel and military aid it receives from other allies. And, and from us, too. That doesn't even count in the aid package, quote-unquote. But the tons of, uh, of, you know, employee hours and agent hours and um, analyst hours that go into this stuff to support them. All right? Um, but where am I? There are tens of thousands of Palestinians dead and now thousands of Lebanese killed. And nobody to answer for either of those. Nearly 2 million yep. Gazans and over 1 million Lebanese citizens, nearly 20% of the country's population have been displaced. That's a nice way of saying they've been kicked out of their homes and their homes have been bulldozed or blown up. So there's nothing for them to come home to. Which is a war crime, by the way. Especially in a fucking sovereign country. Nobody's saying shit. While Israel and the United States submit that their targets are Hamas and Hezbollah, bullshit, they are carrying out strategic strikes, uh-huh. Such claims, given the civilian, ca civ civilian, civilian casualty toll and physical destruction of whole city blocks... English, motherfucker, do you speak it? Not when I get angry, <laughs> are an insult <laughs> to basic human intelligence. The United States is committed to policing the world and supporting Israel while those who live within its borders grapple with rampant inequality. This speaks to an imperial arrogance that lives on futurity. It promises us democracy, prosperity, and security for all in a distant golden age that will come one day. Eventually, we'll save the world one, one ton or two ton bomb at a time. And he wraps up and says, but such an empire has no future. With the planet warming at record rates, Israel's U.S.-backed bellicosity destabilizing the Middle East and the entire world, and the lack of a collective will to fix the problems that we face, the dream of an American empire is at a dead end, and that cannot come soon enough as far as I'm concerned. For yeah. the moment, we're running toward catastrophe, and those with the ability to stop it seem hell-bent on accelerating it. Our only hope is that we realize soon that our only future is one we build together. Kumbaya, my lord. But literally... Help us only one. Let's, let's just literally hope. stop fucking bombing people. Let's start there by stop bombing people. <laughs> no? Oh, sorry. Huh? My buddy Ricky, Council of State Media, yeah. Council of State Media... He put this out, and it, it caught fire. For the benefit of Zionists, here's a handy list of all the acceptable justifications you can use to burn people alive, oh, not allegedly, we saw it, while they're attached to life support machines. Yep. Motherfuckers. We, we had to watch that. We had to, and they had to experience that. Do you think that's going to make people love Israel more and want to support and help Israel more? Well, some, but they're fascist, crazy people. Watched people burn and said, yes, I want more of that. Yeah, that really did happen. Ricky also put out that this, this sign, over 200 zip-tied Palestinians have been found executed in a hospital. And you're upset at our protest? And then finally, I did I did bring this also. So let's let let's watch this. A jupe a a, a jupe. A, <laughs> English motherfucker. A I jupe cannot jupe led protesters. A group of Jewish English led motherfucker, do you speak it? Obviously not tonight. A group of Jewish led protesters in Lower Manhattan. Just storm the New York Stock Exchange. They're calling for an end to the genocide in Gaza and to war profiteering by companies like Raytheon and Lockheed Martin, Free Palestine. Uh, can I full screen this? No. Okay. Yes. No. And 
they shut that building down for hours. They, nobody Russian can get scum. Nobody could get in or out for hours, and they had to call the NYPD. They sent a massive amount of cops over, and they arrested <laughs> a, a couple of people. Brave as fuck. Let Gaza live. Okay, that was the last quick hit that I had. Um, so at that at this point, we got a little bit of a break. Let's uh, thank our our supporters because without them, man, it would be really difficult to do what we do. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for real. Uh, everybody up there, we were able to get Jesse a new computer this year and a mixer. We're working on. We're doing the Indie Media Awards. This time, we're going to figure out what, what's next after we finish. We got only, like, I think we're down to $350 left to to pay to Zago Brothers. Shout out to Zago. He's done incredible work. I'm sure you've seen some of the cartoon illustrations floating around so far on the internet. Um, we're going to show you all of them tomorrow night. Or not tomorrow night, next Sunday night. I can't speak right now. What's with me? I don't know. Um, get your mouth together. Get your mouth, get it all together. Anyway, um, yes, thank you to everyone. Seriously, um, without you, we 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 would we would still do this, but it would be a lot more difficult, and we'd have to spend all the money out of our own pockets, and it makes it a lot more cost prohibitive to do this. Um, Anna Whoever says, you are, "Thank you." Anna says, "My water is blue. It should be clear." We need to throw all regulators and politicians and corporate executives in a volcano stat. That's a good idea. I don't, yeah. I don't mind that. And and give the middle finger to Kellogg's for sure. Jesse and the Jets. Yeah, those those guys regulate. Do, 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 do. That's great. Um, Keep okay. Oh, don't start. Don't start. Don't get. Don't put Michael McDonald in my head. Don't you put. No, 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 no. Don't you put that on me, Ricky Bobby. <laughs> Um, uh, I'm sorry, I thought this was America. Yeah, Angel loves those illustrations. Anna Ringwald, what's going on, Anna Ringwald? Good to see you. You haven't haven't seen. Feels like I haven't seen you in a minute. Welcome. I'd be confused with that other Ringwald. Did I have a mini stroke? Oh God, no! Thankfully, no. Um, that's I don't know what the hell's going on. <laughs> but yes, Israel was a bad idea, but it was also like planned way way before. As we know, um, 1948. This this doesn't go back to October 7th. This doesn't go back to 1967. This doesn't go back to 1948. This goes back to 1898, 1899-ish, if not before then. 